Okay, so um, I have put these in alphabetical order. Have you templated that way too? Yes. All right. Assuming we have the same definition of alphabetical order. Yes. By Berkshire Theater Group first. Yes. Um, and everybody got uh, those materials that we've looked at every year with the uh, the little chart with the three steps and um, in theory. I have I have it here. Oh, okay. okay. The reference. Got hers too, so. All right. I've got Maria's got hers in color. Ready to go. Okay. Let's begin with the Berkshire Theater Group. Um, <clears throat> this. Um, is for the roof, dormers, and cupola. And I think it's a reasonable project. Um, it, the application does not include an estimate and um, sort of figuring what these different components would cost. I think the shingle issue is debatable um, only because it looks very much in this postcard that that's the original surface is shingles, cedar shape type shingles, possibly the siding. So that might be something that we could get a little more specific on at the voting meeting from them. Yeah, so right. So I think the proposal is to put on asphalt shingles, which certainly is what appeared to be on the building now from right. current photographs. Um, it, it does look to me from the photograph that they supplied with their application that the casino originally in the 1880s when it was built had uh, cedar shingles, which would be common at that time period. and. Um, even from the documents they cite in their application, those documents say that asphalt shingles didn't start until the early 1900s. Um, that said, it seems to me at least that it's okay for them to do asphalt shingles if that's their preference now. You know, in a perfect world, I'd love to see it go back and be a real restoration to the original. Um, I guess part of it is we need to hear a little more from them about if they're really doing a restoration and opening up the arcades again, because that facade facing the street is far different from the original. So yes. the degree of restoration they're planning is not very clear here. But yes. long term, if this is a project that's going to go across five years, um, it seems like their phase priorities should be made clear. Yeah, I would hope they would appear at the at the community preservation committee meeting to further elaborate. Yeah. Yes, where they got the number that they're asking for one hundred twenty four thousand five hundred, and um, whether they are looking to do more of a full restoration of the building. Uh, it would be wonderful if they went back to that porch, in my opinion. Um, well, it, yeah, it makes a lot of sense because when it faced the street, that was the porch where you could sit out and, you know, have your tea and play cards or whatever. So now the, those are sort of enclosed and are, I don't even know what they do. Uh, I haven't looked up there for a long time. Um, should we um, just to so it strikes me that we have to do just under the the language of the Community Preservation yes. Act that three step analysis just to cover our bases and um, and at least get them qualified to make to a make, presentation right. at okay. the meeting. Um, so so the three steps are uh, step one is uh, one is it a building structure vessel document or artifacts. So I think we can all agree. Yes, it's a building. Uh, step two is whether it's listed on the State Register of Historic Places. And uh, as we know, the uh, the building there is actually listed on uh, the National and State Register of Historic Places. Um, and so, it's the National Register, Main Street National Register yes, District, district yes. as well. And then the last step is, is always the one that's a little more, I think, qualitative when we look at it. Um, that's whether the proposed project would preserve, rehabilitate, or restore the historic resource. 
Um, so this is where um, uh, I sent around some materials in advance just uh, from the uh, Secretary of the Interior talks about doing between restoration and rehabilitation. And while the applicant here uses the term restoration, and I think a full restoration would be wonderful, as I understand it from the Secretary of Interior, restoration involves uh, going back to what it looked like originally, really, like mm -hmm. what's in that photograph that they supplied, which would be wonderful. Um, I, I, I'm not sure that that's what they're proposing here, but um, it strikes me that if they're not doing a restoration, they're probably doing a rehabilitation, which is a more generous term as I read it from the Secretary of the Interior. Um, the other question that's not answered, are they going to restore or rehabilitate to the original appearance or what it was in 1928 when it got moved? Yes. So, and that's not answered here, so. Yeah, it's an interesting question what happened. I mean, my sense is after it got moved and they were turning it from a casino into a theater is probably when they covered up that very attractive porch. Um, I have heard inklings from people that are involved in the project that they, that at least some would like to go back to that open porch. I'm not sure if that's been decided yet. Apparently it could be done. Um, okay, well, I'm going to add uh, that we will ask those questions about the restoration slash time, the rehabilitation, yeah. and that way we can help a little bit. That would be great. And 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 then, of course, we're interested in knowing where their estimate came from. Since oh, yeah, where's the estimate? Um, but I think with that said, uh, we can find that all three steps have been satisfied so that they can at least make their case before the full Community Preservation Commission. I think that's, yeah, I think it qualifies. Maria, are you? No, uh, I agree. All right. Should I? So we're going to do these minutes um, here and now, so that we can vote them. Uh, so I can send them off to town council. Is that agreeable? Today. We really have to do it today um, because they only have four working days. I counted. Yes. So we'll. So do you mind if I just read you uh, my tentative minutes and see sure. if we agree? Sure. Uh, so Berkshire Theater help build. Excuse me, Berkshire Theater Group. Open parens, rehabilitation slash restoration of roof, dormers, and cupola, close parens. The commission began its review of this application pursuant to the three steps in the attached Community Preservation Commission flow chart. That's this chart that we always attach to our minutes every year. Uh, and concluded that the first two steps are satisfied, i.e. the application involves a building, namely the Berkshire Theater Festival Playhouse on the Berkshire Theater Group campus and that the building is individually listed on the national and state registers of historic places. That's step two. Turning to the third step, whether the proposed project would preserve, rehabilitate, or restore the historic resource, the, the commission found that the proposed historic rehabilitation slash restoration work, open parens, part of a larger long-term rehabilitation slash restoration project, close parens, involves capital improvements or extraordinary repairs to the playhouse or restoration thereof, which is to be accomplished according to the secretary's standards. And so the proposed work constitutes rehabilitation and or restoration under the Community Preservation Act. That sound? Uh, Sounds good. Excellent. All so right. we'll, we'll, um, we'll talk about that in the, the larger meeting and also the fact that they're, they're calling this an unrestricted capital grant um, from this committee, it actually is not because it will be restricted only to what they are proposing in this project. I think that's a very good point. So, um, financially, okay, so we set with that. Yep. All right, the Berkshire Waldorf High School. Um, Now, from all uh, information that we have had and was brought to the uh, public meeting, the high school is in negotiation with the church and is hoping that within several months they will become the actual owners of the building. Um, there is a letter of support here from the church, but there's no definitive date for the actual transfer. 
the project is very broad that they're bringing to us this remediation of the asbestos and lead paint uh, elevator installation uh, restoration of the historic exterior of the building and of interior elements specifying two rooms uh, only the second floor meeting room and the jail space so and those are the ones that it almost seems like they're talking more about a restoration that they that's what i'm thinking the uh, upstairs auditorium back to i think what it was in 1960 when you know when we used to have town meetings there um you know they're not going all the way back to when the place was a theater and you looked over the balcony into a giant open they're not removing the floors but they do propose they want to demolish what is called backstage space it's really the chair storage at the end of the hall at the top. Um, yes, there's there's definitely room back there too. So, uh, so that would that would add a considerable amount of square footage and yes. make it useful, but it does require, I think there's a little roof issue there of having to raise it partially or open it up. And I think they can do that under the definition of restoration and the uh, Secretary of the Interior's uh, standards. Um, you know, restoration really, excuse me, rehabilitation really seems to involve making some changes to the building to make it usable today for something different from its original use, but still being respectful to the historic features. And from what I read in the application, they're, they're definitely planning to be pretty respectful with the historic features on the outside of the building. I think the changes they propose there are quite minimal. So looking at, if we look quickly at the estimates, um, they're specifying things to match it, but the $1,100,000 cost appears to be for the first year. Can I come in peace? Oh, I'm sorry. Some people did not file three copies of their historic applications. Um, so one, three, four. So, right. So I guess as I read this, uh, just looking at that uh, cost summary chart, they want to do one point one million dollars worth of work in FY twenty four. They want to do what three point one million in FY twenty five. Um, that's the total cost. And so they are seeking how much from the CPC? One hundred eighty five six one seven one seventeen cents. This estimate for the hazardous, this is all blended together. And this X, this, um, see, this is concerning. 15 squares of roof shingles at uh, 10,500. The roof was just replaced like three years ago. The town paid for that. And the Stokes Proctor family paid for the exterior painting. So, and you wonder, um, that's under, so the only estimate I think that they've given us is from this uh, for uh, ACM, do we know what that is, and hazardous material. Oh, I have, I have that, I was wondering the um, same thing, yeah. So we don't know what ACM is, right, they're going to abate, but I assume it's something in the nature of hazardous material. I'm going to say asbestos, uh, and the, and, I just don't know. And so... Right, it's a little funny. You wonder why roof shingles are um, something that is hazardous. Well, they were uh, they were just recently replaced, so they would right. not have asbestos right. in them. You would think not. They're, because you're not allowed to sell them um, unless they had them in somebody's basement and used them. But I know that's not the case because this was a specific cost that the town put in to the building to protect it. Yep. So that's a big question. For Did Ray. they so. replace all the shingles or is it possible there's a section they didn't replace? Well, they had to tar it. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, there was there was a leak that they identified, but I think they did the whole thing because there's no point thing. in ripping and. But maybe not. I mean, who knows? But I guess so. I would say, though, that's only ten thousand dollars of a quotation for two hundred ninety two thousand for ACM, whatever that is, and asbestos material abatement, hazardous material abatement. Um, so even though that's the only quote they have given us, um, let's see, we get to, 
I want to reconfigure the um, entrance in order to get the elevator in there. That, that's a question because actually for um, yeah. an earlier yeah. plan, they had a different ramping system to create the access to that entrance without touching the entrance. It just went with a different set of steps. Yeah, and I tried to follow that in here on these drawings to tell what exactly they were going to do. Um, and I must say, the definition of north, east, south, and west is a little confusing to me. Um, so the parking lot is, entrance. Is, is, is this what's facing away from the church? I wonder, they're calling that north. Um, and then let's let's look at this one. I think this is the side facing the gully, and that yes. is that. Yeah, and this is right. This is the police station. Correct, here. which yes, is the yes, original yes, eighteen thirty nine. Yes. So, okay. And then yeah. let's look That's at this. A little tricky. So here we go. So this is what they're going to change. So this is they're calling this the south elevation. I would have called it the west elevation. Um, this is facing the church, and and I think see it says new accessible entrance. So I think that's what that quote is for, is to do this work. And, and I can see, right, because as I look at the drawings, there's an elevator right inside here, which they need, that you have to have an elevator yes. to make it ACA compliant. And so in a sense, I think this is making it ACA compliant too. And that does count as rehabilitation under the secretary's standards. Um, so, so my feeling is we could approve uh, even that change. I mean, it looks like it's reasonably tasteful too. Okay, um, I'd like to see that. Do we not have a picture of it currently? Wait a minute. Let's just look. This doesn't tell us anything. Yeah, I don't know that they get it. It looks to me like four. I don't um, remember this many windows there. And I, I think that's possible. Because these like two should windows. be the same height, the portico. But it sounds like the whole doorway is going to be dropped. And this retains the ceremonial entrance with steps. Yes. So they're going to have two ramps. Well, one. Right, I think they are going to retain the ramp in the back. Um, but they have to change it to make a code. Because it doesn't. This slant is not. Yeah, I, that's not. I mean, it's, yeah. it's apparent that has to be done. The parking situation back there and the, and the egress and all is going to be vastly changed um, because they'll be taking up another lane, shall we say, behind it. And it begs the question, will it be only one way in and one way out? But this is probably the most defined change on the right. exterior. I think that is, I agree with you. And um, my feeling is particularly because it's designed to make the building ADA compliant, it's okay, and particularly because to me it doesn't look bad. Maria, do you have a view? Are you able to see what we were looking at? Yeah, she's got she's yeah. going to. Yeah, I just no. I, I think it. it uh, I think I'm going to drive good. by there um, and look at that before this next, just to make sure. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. 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 I remember going up those stairs, up. and they were horrible. <laughs> well, the interior stairs are looks like they're retaining those. Shall I go to Google Maps and see if I can get up a picture? Why don't we do that? And that way we don't have to fuss it too much. And, uh, I'm heading down Main Street from the Playhouse. I did not put it in my. I'm going to look ahead. I'm going to see what else I flagged here. Oh, to sure luck, I've been able, it's right through the trees, we put no stuff. I was trying to look at it carefully while we were doing that archaeology project there. Okay, here we go. I'd so, like to make you share that screen. Do you want to share that screen? Um, that would require a level of skill that I do not have. Okay. So, um, okay, no problem. I 
I can make you a co-host, but I don't, yeah, you gotta be hooked up somehow, yep. Yes, but uh, we're just looking, so we're looking at an image of what the, uh, what I would call the west entrance to the old town hall looks like now, and we're comparing it to what the proposal is. And uh, since I'm looking at those upstairs windows, it looks like there are some modest changes, but not huge. This, this, this is different it's there. The pediment. But yes, this is going to be different with down the below with the stair entrance. And, and to me, that's a modest change. And given that it's for ADA compliance, it's OK. But that means what they're doing, that entire, yeah, the door has to come down almost four feet to make that work. Because the path goes right in front of it. Right, or, or it has to really airs. bring up the um, ground level somehow. Um, so yeah, it, it ought to be accessible there so people can get in reasonably and get to the uh, elevator that they're going to be adding. Well, that was the other question. Does that mean that they're dropping us here for some reason? I'll, I'll ponder that later. I don't think it's critical for this right now. Yep. So I have some proposed language. Go for it. Let's see what um, we can. I will read if you can all bear with me while I hopefully. Oh, the stairs do seem to remain. Okay. All right. on the other side. Okay, are we ready to hear some proposed language? Yes, please. Okay, Berkshire Waldorf High School, parens, rehabilitation slash restoration of Old Town Hall, close parens. This project seeks funds to rehabilitate the Old Town Hall located in the Main Street National Register Historic District to which it is a contributing building. So that covers steps one and steps two. The SHC next considered step three. The proposed work for which funding is sought in the present application is to rehabilitate and or restore both the exterior and the interior of the hall. According to the presented drawings, the exterior is to be restored with no significant changes except to enable compliance with the ADA, while the interior is to be rehabilitated in part with some changes. The estimated cost of the entire project is $4.2 million a $292,000 bid to remove asbestos and other toxic interior features is included with the application. And, and I guess also included with the application is, is a bid to uh, do the doorway, is that correct? Um, One second. Um, actually, like page two of that. Side, yeah. side entry. Yes, yes. So for the access to the lift. So, so it looks like that's 264000 for the uh, yeah. ADA and accessibility upgrades. So let me add that. It's 150K just for the door. Wow. Selected demolition and uh, accessibility yeah. upgrades. So let me read that sentence again. Uh, the estimated cost of the entire project is $4.2 million, period. A $292,000 bid to remove asbestos and other toxic interior features in, is included with the application, as well as a $242,000 bid for ADA and accessibility upgrades, period. Although it's 264. 264. Oh, oh, okay. okay, thank you. So let me correct that. As well as a $264,000 bid for ADA and accessibility upgrades. Is that well, right? Well, yes. Now, my question is I'm guessing that the Garaventa Elvora, that's the elevator? I was wondering that too when we saw that. Yeah, it's so one, one unit. unit. I would think it would ninety thousand. That makes yeah. Most elevators are 
50,000 and upwards. So. so I think we can call that. So the, the total bid is 264,000. So broadly speaking, it's ADA and accessibility upgrades because both making the entrance and accessible and then having an elevator yeah, the channel for the collectively elevator. qualify as ADA and accessibility upgrades. So I think that language is good. Uh, so for my final sentence, I've written, assuming we all agree, the SHC found that the proposed work constitutes rehabilitation and or restoration of the hall as defined in the CPA. Do we agree that it qualifies as rehabilitation? I think it has. Yeah, um, yeah I think it's hit every. It's in the Main Street National Register Historic District, there's no question. Yep. I'm hoping that in the future they refer to it as Proctor Hall only because the architect that designed it in 1902 came under the auspices of the Proctor family. And then in 1962, Mrs. Proctor paid for the interior um, work to make it into offices. So it's kind of, we have Old Town Hall, we've got another one down the street too. We've got, we well, have three public the town offices, right? Oh, oh, right, but then there's the town hall on the Main true, Street the down, true, down in yeah. downtown. Yeah. So I think Proctor Hall for this, Good point. it'd be nice to acknowledge that um, participation. Uh, Maria, were you okay with that? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, I'm ready for the next one. I did chest to it. This uh, alphabetical order. Oh, wait, cemetery. I called that town of Stockbridge. Oh, you did? Uh -oh. Okay. All right, now we're okay. close. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Chesterwood. Where is Chesterwood? Give me a second here, but I know. You have two clips oh, together yeah. there. That's it. I just was realizing, I recognized that. Okay. Um, I one copy of that. Is that your only one? Yeah. Oh, I'll you one second here. It's uh, the total they're asking for is one thirty-five nine hundred. Um, and. Well, there's some questions that I have, but I, they don't apply to this right now. Um, I mean, one thing I'm going to mention, they're, they're saying that um, it's been open as a public historic site since 1969. It was actually open beginning in the 1950s. Mary Flynn was the first director in 1954-55. So they're only counting it being open under the National Trust. Uh -huh. um, just a fact. I haven't, I haven't included these figures in my draft. Yeah, okay, you want to go ahead and do that? Let me add those. So this is a candidate for sure. It's, it's sort of a visual. Really preserving the, the wall, putting it together so it won't fall down. They're also accounting for the plant material. Well, they're only asking 20,000 of the 135, so it probably wouldn't cover the plant material. Well, the, actually, because it's historic, they're going to move it. And they'll put it back in. Oh, OK. You know, there's oh. lines and things that were there from the original garden from the turn of the century. Some of them are kinds of things you can't probably just go by at the nursery these days. And does this wall actually connect to the main building of Chesterwood? No, I mean, do they have a picture for There are pictures. Oh, yeah, let me discern. help you with that because this we have, to, uh, we have to find that the project is appropriating CPA funds for a building structure vessel real property document artifact. So is it part of a building or is, is it maybe a structure? This is the wall. This is a studio. Would, okay. oh, studio. I would so, think it would so be a stu studio. structure. It's a structure. Okay. So let's see. 
All right, so let me just read you my tentative first sentence and see if it needs to be edited at all. This application seeks funding for the restoration of the brick walls in Chesterwood's studio garden, semicolon. The walls are a structure integral to Chesterwood and thus covered under CPA step one. That's the one that says mm -hmm. it's a building structure. Does that sound right? Do we yes. need to mm -hmm. say anything more? Okay. And you can see this is. Clearly they need some work. Yep. Um, the next sentence I have is that it says that the commission has previously noted that Chesterwood is individually listed on the national and state register of historic places. We all agree with that. Oh, right? it's also a separate national register historic district. It's one of our five historic districts. Well, that's why I'm, I'm saying individually listed. Uh, well, it's the whole thing. The outbuilding. And isn't it called Chesterwood or is it called something else? It is Chesterwood National Register Historic District, as well as being a national story landmark, as well as being on the state register. So it's good. Would you like to propose any amended language? <laughs> <laughs> what I've written. Right now it says the commission has previously noted that Chesterwood is individually listed on the national and state register of historic places, which is that's the test for qualifying under the CPA. So so maybe the landmark thing is gilding the lily in the sense that we don't really need to well, get it's into kind that. of the higher power. Here. It is. But on the other hand, you don't need the higher power. I don't know if individually qualify. is the word you need to put. Though. OK, so we just take strike. out individually. Yeah. All right. So it's listed. I mean, that's all we need to find, right? It's listed on the National and State Definitely. Register of Historic Places. OK, and then the final question, which I have tentatively drafted some language subject to everyone's opinion. The commission next turned to whether the proposed work constitutes rehabilitation and or restoration of the walls under the CPA. The proposed work is set forth in detail in the application. The work's total cost is $135,900 and $20,000 of CPA funds is requested. The commission found that the work meets the requisite definitions under the CPA. And what is the word you're using? Under number three here. Um, so I, I confess I'm slightly fudging, uh, okay. saying that it constitutes rehabilitation and or restoration. Okay, that's fine. As long as it's one or the other, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds okay. good. Okay. Now I have the cemetery. Cemetery. <clears throat> okay. Um. Now. Let me just ask one quick question. Uh, this was chosen. Um, is the worst case scenario, or what was the priority? How did it, how did it become the priority for the cemetery? Well, yeah, so I have been attending cemetery commission meetings on behalf of the historical commission. Um, and to provide the broadest background, as I think we know, the uh, Cemetery Commission has undertaken a restoration project of the old section of the cemetery. And they hired experts, uh, Preservation Inc., who is referenced in this application, uh, who have done an assessment of every single stone in the old section of the cemetery. It's a fabulous piece of work. It's all uh, available via Excel spreadsheets. You can look up any individual stone and there's all kinds of information. They've uh, evaluated what needs to be done on each stone uh, in different levels of work that is required. Some just need to be clean. Some need to be clean, but they're also leaning. Some are broken and there's different uh, costs to repairing each one. Okay, now, so the reason these two stones, so this is uh, John Sargent and his wife, Abigail, um, they were singled out, I think, partly because the Cemetery Commission considers them sort of the first couple of Stockbridge, if you will, John Sargent having been the original uh, minister to the town. And there are two very prominent table tombs that, according to the historic research here, uh, which Maria, I think, was involved in helping to track down with the photo of how they used to be up on on uh, legs, they, feet, yeah. um, they for now, for some reason, have fallen and are lying flat on the ground where they're subject to all kinds of uh, decay. And so the, uh, the, the experts from Preservation Inc. 
said those two stones are of a whole different level of quality of restoration required if you're going to mm -hmm. do it right. And so we will provide you with a separate bid for those if, if you're interested in restoring them. And the Cemetery Commission said, yes, please give us a separate bid. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the separate bid was supplied and it's in multiple steps. So the first step was cleaning and uh, that took place last year and that's shown in the photographs. Now there's not even a, oh, a resume of that particular report. Um, Did they not separate that out, the Sergeant Stones? So yes, there is a separate um, Okay proposal for the sergeant stones then i guess i'm a little bit surprised it's not included here yeah, i think people would like to see that um, and it is so let's see so so yes yeah, so, so they um i think could have included a few more materials here um the forty two thousand, as i understand it is to do the next step um, it's definitely not 100% full restoration, which might involve lifting them up and putting them Correct. back on legs, although that remains to be seen whether uh, the experts would even advise that. Um, but what, as I understand, the second step is, is to um, get some very careful, high-quality equipment in there to very gently lift them a little bit. Uh, so that they can see better what's underneath, yeah. um, like, for example, are there fallen legs under there? Uh, what yeah, what I think, exactly I think, is underneath? So, I think so they it's just one step of a careful process. And in each case, the, the, the agreement is that the experts will check back with the cemetery commission after each step is done with their advice as to whether it makes sense to go to the next step or, okay. or what have you. So this is, as I understand, is for step two. And it would have been nice if they'd included that whole. Uh, yeah, I think there's one thing in the application. Some people who are not familiar with this kind of work, um, you know, the resumes of the the people who are actually doing the work might have been included here. There's qualifications for them, um, and I guess that's enough. Uh, yes, these people are definitely I'm just trying to uh, see if they give very examples. highly qualified. Do they give other examples of what they, they do? They have worked, uh, I know, in the Ford Family Cemetery in Michigan. Okay. And uh, the Gloucester the Historical Cemetery in the Boston area they worked in. Oh, no, that's his uh, teaching experience. Okay, that, well. So I, my understanding is, and, and frankly, my um, firsthand experience with these people is that they're highly qualified and are doing a really good job. I don't, I don't really have. I'm just saying, I think a lot of people that are not familiar with how this kind of work is conducted would be very interested in um, the specific examples of things that are kind of New Englandy. They've got a lot of abroad work. So the only other question I have here, there is absolutely zero match for this. Uh, so the Cemetery Commission funds would they come into play for the next part of this if this turns uh, out to be an exorbitantly expensive project? Yes. Um, so, uh, as I understand it, the Cemetery Commission does have um, a fair amount of money in a fund that's been building up over the years, which they are spending for all that other work uh, in the old section. Okay. And I think the feeling was this is a separate little discrete project that's maybe of particular importance to the town, and it would be something that the town might want to support individually. The only other thing I think we need to request, they're talking about a thorough documentation, a copy given to the Stockbridge Library. I, I would like the Historical Commission to have copies too, because this will fall under our purview. Yes, and in fact, I mean, I will say in my capacity as our emissary to the Cemetery Commission. I have they have been giving constantly you, updating yeah. me with these documents, and I have actually somewhere here on my computer okay. everything, including that um, uh, Excel spreadsheet that I was referencing. Yeah, so that, that's we will good, definitely a get a copy. Good, of everything. good document because it, the the establishing the priorities for the continuation of this project is going to be very important. Hey, Linda. 
Yes. Do you want me to share the Sergeant Stone proposal to the screen? I have it open. Um, I have it myself, but we don't need it, I think, at the moment. Okay. The committee, no problem. the committee, the full committee of the CPC might like to see that. Estimates I'll pull it really to helpful. everyone right now. It's very helpful to people that um, just don't know how these things work and how much they cost. Because it's delicate, expensive work. There is no question. Okay, so, so far, we don't have a match, but that we know that that is a possibility down the line to augment this. Yes, yes, that right. There are multiple steps in this project, and should the Cemetery Commission decide it makes sense, and should the experts recommend that they go beyond step two to step three, um, I think that may well fall to the Cemetery Commission's funds. I, I think they, they haven't... Um, decided because they haven't gotten there. And, and, and I guess I would say broadly, the Cemetery Commission, in a sense, and, and therefore the town, is contributing to most of this uh, restoration project. They're, they have paid these experts quite a lot of money to do the assessment and to start the actual work, uh, which began last fall. As some of you may have seen, there were volunteers on site. Right. I, I was, you know. Also, we have got to keep the um, Stockbridge Muncie community involved in this because we're in delicate territory there. Yes. In fact, some of the members of the Stockbridge Muncie community stopped by when the work was happening last fall. That's and I think we're pleased to see uh, the respectful way in which uh, their uh, part of the cemetery was being treated. It's a very high priority for them that the underground of Stockbridge is included in our planning and um, how should we say, future interpretation? Yes. Um, so let's go back to our three steps. We've yeah, got- so I have these. some proposed language, you ready? Let's go for the- Okay, Town of Stockbridge, Sergeant, Sergeant Tombs Restoration. This application is to continue the preservation and restoration of two fallen table tombs in the Stockbridge Cemetery. The cemetery is within the boundaries of the Main Street National Register Historic District and is listed as contributing thereto. The tombs are those of John Sargent and his wife, Abigail. John Sargent was appointed, was the appointed colonial missionary to the indigenous people living within the boundaries of Stockbridge at the time of Sargent's appointment in the 1730s. Sargent is central to the early history of Stockbridge which was chartered by the general court as a mission to the indigenous people. The tombs are artifacts within the meaning of the CPA, thus meeting the step one threshold. Regarding step two, step two is, uh, is the resource on the uh, register. Okay. Uh, regarding step two, John's Sergeant's John Sargent's tomb is cited in the Main Street National Register Historic District Registration Form as individually contributing to the district. Uh, see section seven, page 21. And Mrs. as well? Here we go. Nope. Oh. Abigail Sargent's tomb is not so listed. However, okay. SHC found that her companion stone to her husband's is significant to the history of Stockbridge. So we have to find that. Uh, I think Abigail Stone is significant as she was John Sargent's wife and widow. And I, there's no question, but that's why I'm just questioning that she's not mentioned. Yeah, so she is not mentioned just in that report okay. uh, that uh, Peggy Hepler did. Well, we uh, we will give her that approbation. Very good. <laughs> Go with that, Maria? Yes. So therefore, I say, accordingly, step two of the CPA test is satisfied. Finally, step three is satisfied as the proposed work is to preserve and or restore the two tombs. Does that sound right? Sounds Definitely. good. Excellent. All right, so I think we're all agreed on that. And we I have the Stockbridge Library next. Okay, so we have two separate ones from them. Yes, I've got the uh, photos up first, Anson Clark Photography Collection. So, all right, now this is an interesting project because yes. these, um, they're daguerreotypes, tintypes, and amrotypes. And Anson Clark is a West Stockbridge person. 
And all of these pictures relate to West Stockbridge, as well, far as we know, except for we have unidentified people here. And it's very possible that they are Stockbridge people because I don't know of any photographer at this time period operating in Stockbridge. And we know that he took the photograph of Agrippa Hall, who was Correct. a Stockbridge resident. Didn't he live in Interlaken for a spell? Well, see, that's my confusion, because I thought there was a, a Clark there. Right. The um, You know where uh, Clyde Wade lived? Yes. That next house up is supposed to be where, and the woman who owned it, she doesn't own it anymore. She did a lot of research on Anson Clark. Marina? Uh, yeah, I think okay, that was so, it. Yeah, because she was just in the painter connection, too. Yes, uh, and I remember seeing some of that research. Okay, so I think that that justifies my question here. I'll look at the National Register listing for um, that house. So I have some tentative language okay. that I can throw out here and we can see if we want to uh, edit it. Uh, Stockbridge Library Museum and Archives, SLMA for short, uh, first application. This project seeks funds to preserve and restore 19th century photographs that are part of the Anson Clark photography collection located in the SLMA. Step one, the photographs are artifacts under the CPA. Regarding step two, the SHC considered whether the photographs are significant to the history or culture of Stockbridge. And the SHC found in the affirmative for the following reasons. Anson Clark was a local pioneer of photography working in Stockbridge and West Stockbridge during the 1840s and 1850s, shall I add, and that he uh, resided in uh, I think we can confirm that. Um, well, you're changing things. Uh, the heading Stockbridge Library Museum and Archives, get rid of and and put an ampersand. Very good. Thank you, Maria. Uh, so let's see. So I've got, so these are the reasons why we think uh, the photographs are significant to our history and culture. So one was Anson Clark was a local pioneer of photography working in Stockbridge and West Stockbridge during the 1840s and 1850s, and he resided in Curtisville. Most significantly, he created in 1845 the only known photograph of Agrippa Hall, a seminal African-American figure in the history of Stockbridge. The Hall photograph is one of eight images in the Anson Clark collection donated to the SLMA in 1949. The whole photograph has been conserved. The other seven have not been conserved and are the subject of this application. One of the photographs dated 1841 is a very early image of the center of West Stockbridge, the town bordering Stockbridge to the west. The others appear to date from the same time period and show scenes and or people. The preservation of the entire collection is important as collectively the images depict very early images of the historic people, architecture and culture of Stockbridge and its environs. Uh, so that's my statement as to why um, this, these uh, photographs are significant to the history and culture of Stockbridge. Correct. Sound good? Yeah, and uh, it's a little, I, I was very confused. At first I thought we were talking about nine. The collection has nine, eight are now being uh, put up for conservation treatment. They, oh, they did one before, didn't they? They did a group of hull. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because so I was, thought it was eight and seven. There were eight images total and seven up for restoration, but it's actually nine, nine images total and eight. So up we have eight applications right okay, here. Okay. So I'm correcting that. Yeah. Uh, so it's now that there are nine images in the collection and eight of them have not been conserved. In this application. The question I'm going to ask at the meeting is I'm curious to know why these were there in uh, 1949. Um, and the donor we have on this label, that it took them until 1999 to accession them. <laughs> so I find that a little odd. They're, more they're treasures. treasures. They're treasures. Yeah. Real treasures. Um, so that covers step two, the uh, historic significance. And then uh, here's the last step. Regarding step three, the SHC found that the proposed project, which involves a professional local conservator. It's not local. Well, broadly speaking, Oakley's over in the Albany area, right? Uh-uh. He's near Buffalo. 
Actually, Rochester. No, he was there, but I think now he's more local. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Coney Island Falls. Coney Island Falls. It's in Western New okay. York. I know this man, so I know. Right. Very good. I'm, uh, he, I'm um, he used to have, they didn't give us Vitae here, but he used to work for the um, New England uh, Document Conservation Center and did a lot of photograph projects. So let me read my revise. Yes. Yep. Regarding step three, the SHC found that the proposed project, which involves a professional conservator retired from the George Eastman house, competently preserving these delicate artifacts, and this work constitutes preservation of the artifacts under the CPA. I think his estimates are very nicely done. Um, the question I'm gonna ask them is, when they do this again, if they could give his um, business vitae kind of thing. I mean, Agreed. this sounds to me like he's at his own house doing this. Yes, in private but it is practice. good that he worked for the drug house. Yeah, oh no, well, he's, he's I'm not saying he's yeah. not a good guy. I'm just saying people are gonna say, well, why are you gonna send it to this guy, you know, to his house to be worked on if they're so valuable? And the answer is because he's credentialed. Yep. And, um, and frankly, I assume he's a little more reasonable than say the uh, park. Well, when conservators leave, um, a, you know, a regional conservation center kind of practice and go out on their own, they're not they're not charging the same price because the overhead that conservators have to give back to their institution is why it becomes expensive. Um, but they don't make a living wage either because of that. So this is this is a good solution. Good. That. Is that all sound agreeable to you, Maria? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the last one is the um, microfilm, and that needs an and. Okay. Oh, the and, yeah, all of it. Yeah. I went to uh, Washington Lee University, and that was always a big deal there. They like the A and D as opposed, as opposed to. Well, li literally, the name uses the and. Yeah. Very good. No, that's good. When they change their name, that's you know. yeah. All right, so um, they are proposing to send this to the center, Northeast Document Conservation Center, where Gary Albright used to work. So um, there's a couple of little things in this that we will need a specification on. Um, I think we've done this before, but. There's a very interesting point that's made here in the contract that they will have to sign. It is that we have not had the opportunity to examine your microfilm. So the prices are going to be subject to the uh, examination when they arrive at this institution. It also says is there, that- Is there an estimate? Um... Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna hand this to you to read in just a minute. But the point I'm making is I hand it over to you. 10% over the estimated image count, there's an adjustment that you have to agree to in advance, one, two, or three. And there will be blank pages in these as well, uh, in the scrapbooks and anything they've done. Um, so in an odd way, you probably want them to even do the blank pages because you can't get back to this original context unless it is exactly as it was during the microfilming. Some people do that to cheap out, I think. But then we have something they call an OCR, which I have no idea what that is. Um, and it's per page again. Optical character recognition. Optical character recognition. Character recognition. Okay, so Surprised I didn't spell that out. Oh, because this is going to be searchable. Correct. Which will be pretty excellent. Um, and it's a very handy thing to have, but then somebody who's really into this will want to see the original eventually. Because it will be available. Right? Well, I've had this is not my first rodeo with microfilm, and I can tell you one thing: a lot of institutions, libraries, and, and museums um, microfilm their magazines and periodicals but they left out the pages that had the advertising, which often had, you know, really important information. Like, look at this terracotta we did for the such and such, blah, blah, blah. So <laughs> there you are going, well, I wonder what that was. 
Um, and then that, that keep, restricts the use of those paper periodicals because of their fragility. I haven't listed the amount of money that they're seeking. The total? Draft. Yeah, do you have that? Okay, an unmatched $5,600. This microfilm is now at Iron Mountain, which is over in New York State. So I'm assuming they have absolutely no access to it unless they go to Iron Mountain or they order it from Iron Mountain and bring it back to Stockbridge. This is clearly a good project. Um, yeah, there's the, a lot. You know, I think town council may be a little persnickety about this. Um, but we did do another microfilm project. And how did we get around that? Or we, am, I, am I thinking of the oral history tapes? Um, I'll just, uh, I'll read you something from okay. the minutes. I think we did the oral history tapes, so I think that's what you're thinking of. So it's here, um, the microphone at that point. not that I'm aware I mean, of. I mean, I think, so I, I think we should overrule what town council is saying here, and God bless Sally for being aggressive about getting things done. Um, so this is from our minutes last year when we had the historic structure report uh, for the Lincoln Rockland Museum in Linwood House. Um, and we were commenting on some guidance we had received from town council the year before, and we quoted it. Uh, so I'm just gonna quote what town council mm -hmm. wrote to us on February 21, uh, 2021. Mm -hmm. DOR's guidance in IGR 20119-14 provides that, quote, funding for cataloging, indexing, scanning, digitizing, transcribing, or otherwise preserving the information content of, multiple, of municipal documents, rather than preserving or restoring the physical historic resource itself is not allowable. The historic document is the historic resource. Here, the historic resource would not be a document, um, so now it's to something else because that was Linwood House. Um, well, because the money was given for planning. Right, so they did, They then did say yes, but we can allow it because it's planning. But in other words, they were saying that cataloging, indexing, scanning, digitizing, or transcribing information doesn't qualify um, as preserving an artifact. And literally, that might be right, but, it, but I did research um, and it seems to me that towns left and right are using CPC money to digitize, and it makes sense as a matter of common sense. Maybe we should uh, look at the website again and see what happened. Uh, Peter, can we use administrative funds to fund that? Um, well, that's a good question. I, I am can, not a CPA expert, so I don't know about we, that. We can use it, but this a project may exceed the allowance that we have in each of the three categories. But at least and, it's only five thousand dollars, right? So. Well, four ninety nine ninety nine. We could give them that, uh -huh. and they could come up with the other sixteen hundred. If town council says we absolutely can't do this, so you can you can go to communitypreservation.org. Um, and search all past results from towns all the time. So I just searched the word digitize and it brings up multiple towns that are using CPA money to digitize historic records. So we don't know whether it's uh, the administrative or the regular, right? Are I confess you? I did not read that closely to see. I have a feeling I, I didn't catch anybody saying, oh, we have to use administrative funds. I'd have to look at this um, on the computer screen. So yeah, so, so, so I have I have the link in the minutes, which I think is important. Okay, let's do that. It seems to me there's precedent for CPA.orgs, uh, and then you go to um, all towns. So hold on here, it's in my minutes. Um, so the site is uh, communitypreservation.org, and then you can just search right up at the top of the page. There's a search box, so I search digitize. Okay. And That's what we want to bring up okay. uh, all kinds of towns. I'm going to read this kind of money. So, so you know, sometimes I just think our town council is a little too strict, um, and uh, we should do what all the other towns are doing. Well, obviously, it makes sense is a matter of common sense. Um, clearly, these documents are artifacts or documents. Those are both qualified under the CPA. Uh, it's clearly significant to the history of stock, because I have some proposed language about this. 
So then the final question is, are we preserving, rehabilitating, or restoring the historic resource? So it seems to me we're preserving it. Um, yeah, because then you could put the, um, the whole point of Iron Mountain is that they're preserving it there for $30 a year. And so to have the actual, have an additional copy, like in many towns in Massachusetts where there's church and, and town offices, half of the church records are in the town office, half are in the other, and each of them has a copy of the piece they don't have in the original. So that way, this you know town and gown thing from 1840s lets people get into these records. They're vital records. And one of the things about Stockbridge that when uh, in the 1930s under the WPA, the vital records of every town in Massachusetts were made public in a document. Stockbridge is the only town that wasn't included. There are no vital records published for Stockbridge. So every bit of our history that we have in any format is all we're ever going to get. <laughs> so. Yeah, and so right. So I feel like we're preserving it because you're putting it in a format that's much more safe in a way it's by user digitizing friendly. it than. Uh, but even you know, who knows what could happen at Iron Mountain? Um, oh, nothing's going to happen over there. Uh, that place is like that's where you have no true, idea what's true. an Iron Mountain. But the point is. Um, the fact is that they're very secure and you don't mess around with them. That's number one. Number two, to me, it's much more accessible to be able to, to turn a microfilm machine at your own pace and not have a limit to the amount of time you can look at the actual original, which happens in a lot of libraries. You got one hour, you got them real fast. And if they're kind to you, you get a little more time, but this, this makes less touching Less staff time. That's a good point. I mean, in that sense, it's preservation. That's because, total preservation. Right, people fumbling around with your microfilm. Well, you're wearing white gloves when you're doing uh, this anyway. So. But we know, and those microfilm readers are kind of sketchy. All right, I have some proposed language here for us to consider. Uh, so the heading is Stockbridge Library Museum and Archives with an ampersand. That's LMA for short. Second application. Okay. This project seeks $5,600 in unmatched funds to digitize master microfilm reels that contain important historical records of Stockbridge. The reels of microfilm qualify as artifacts, step one. And so the next question is whether they are significant to the history or culture of Stockbridge, step two. The SHC answered this question in the affirmative. The reels in question contain three sets of records. One, Stockbridge Congregational Church, 1766 to 1850. That's amazing. Two, Berkshire Playhouse Scrapbooks, 1928 to 1978. And three, the Berkshire News, a Stockbridge publication, 1890 to 1895. Each is fundamental to the history and culture of Stockbridge. As elaborated in greater detail in the application, the church records depict colonial town social trends customs and people. The scrapbooks chronicle early to mid 20th century arts and culture in Stockbridge. And the Berkshire News reports on the 19th and the Berkshire News reports on 19th century Stockbridge history. The final question is whether the digitation of these historic records qualifies as preservation of these records under the CPA. To answer this question, the SHC researched whether other similar digitization projects have been approved under the CPA, and the SHC found numerous examples in the affirmative. C, and then there's the citation, the communitypreservation.org site, where you okay. search the word digitize. Accordingly, the SHC found that the plan to have a highly regarded contractor digitize the historic records qualifies as preservation thereof under the CPA. Does that sound good? I think it sounds, sounds good. good. Yeah. I think it gets to the heart of the matter. And look here, here's the land. Sure. Wow. He's joining the church. Here we go. The Williams and his is... wife. And here's another one here. This woman is the wife of Catherine Williams. So all these families are now Betsy Sargent. It'll be amazing to have that accessible. 
It's a great project. I think we see that the copy is cut off. I don't get the rest of the page. The library clearly can't afford to be doing all this sort of thing. So if no. the Community Preservation Act can help. Yeah, the only thing I, I think we'll bring up is that um, they're going to have to look at this contract very carefully because these people have really covered their. <laughs> yeah, because. Um, they don't want to be held responsible for someone being cranky about being charged for things that are blank pages or whatever. But negative research counts. That's why I always say that if you do those pages you don't think are important because that's your job. It's important to history. Okay, and then there's insurance and all that. They're going to have to figure that one out. So. Good project. And that finishes all our applications, right? Yes. So if we can get those to uh, the mayor's office today, that yeah. gives them four oh, working yeah. days. Um, and then um, that goes to the Yes, I, I would, would the chair entertain a motion to adjourn? I would Actually, do that. tonight, look, before you adjourn, I just had a question for the board. Um, uh, would you be available on March 9th? We've been doing kind of roundtables this week. It's Parks and Rec and ConCom and uh, Agriculture and Forestry. And I'd like to do a roundtable at the March 9th Select Board meeting with Historic Preservation and the Historical Commission. Uh, and uh, and the, the agenda would be really anything you want to talk about, but I wanted to include updates on the Chime Tower, the Civil War Monument, any discussions you want to have about lessons learned from the, the you know, the Daniel Chester French uh, garden structure, really whatever you want to talk about. Um, but okay. I just wanted to invite uh, both committees in for the March 9th meeting if you're available. Okay, and what time is it? It's 6.30 p.m. on Thursday, March 9th. Okay, um, and who else is attending Historic Preservation Committee? Yeah. Historic preservation uh, and anybody else you think I should invite, but yes. Uh, well, clearly somewhere planning, zoning and building inspector need <laughs> kind of a touch with some of this. Okay. Um, I mean, you think about, we want to think about communication in a positive way. And there seem to be some gaps that occurred in some of this past stuff that I'm just curious about myself. I'd like to. Yeah. No, the lack of information. I mean, uh, things are more public now. I mean, M Michael, for example, has all of the uh, conservators work on the soldiers monument that's done. And so that was finished as of November. So, and that we'll have to figure out how things like that become accessible to the public. Um, Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we, we talk about all these issues. I want to start a conversation on the night. That sounds good. And, and you'll reach out to Carl uh, separately to see if you can get uh, him for the. Uh... I, of course, will, yes. Sounds good. So I've got it in my calendar now to okay. appear on uh, Thursday, March 9 at 6 30 p.m. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Patrick. All right, let's see. What else? Okay, this is going home. It's me. Uh, we haven't adjourned yet. Do you want to entertain my motion to adjourn? Yes. Do we hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody.